Stephanie me. asked the question. Uh, this this kind of will go into some of what Jackie was asking. Yeah. Stephanie says Microsoft announced new personal pricing for Copilot and also lowered the number of users required for the Enterprise Edition. I'm still not sure of the differences between versions, but the real concern is how Copilot interacts with older versions of Office. Uh, do we need to be on the latest versions of all software to take advantage of Copilot? It's a great question. So, Carawana and her team yesterday did a whole live stream on and a presentation on the different SKUs and the purposes and the, you know, which license for what. There's personal Copilot, there's the enterprise Copilot, you know, and, and it was very informative. I thought it was a, a really good, clear, kind of model of which what to expect from which one if and you know um, the fact that the personal one doesn't leverage any enterprise level you know, you know the copilot model is not being fed by business information it's being you know that's within your security for your tenant and there, there was a lot of questions about that it's like you know if we turn on copilot for our business are you using that for the people out in the the rest of the world mm -hmm to feed and teach your model. And they're like, no, they're separate. Just like you have two separate logins for the personal Microsoft accounts, which are like your Outlook, um, MSN, all those accounts versus your enterprise accounts. That, that same security wall exists for the data. So it, it, I believe it was recorded. I'll see if I can find the link for that, but mm -hmm. it was a very, very good, um, clear session and demystified a lot of things for me personally, because I had the same question. The, when you read the documentation about the minimum requirements for Copilot, you do need to be on the, I think it's called the current channel or the current release for the Office 365 apps. So like the app, the desktop apps physically need to get updated to have like the co-pilot tooling in it. So yes, yeah. you, have you, have to have to, you have to have the licensing. You have to go from O365 to M365. Yeah. Okay. And that, then once you have that, then you can then you can go for the co-pilot license. Yeah. And if the so, apps are an issue, then you, you can use the uh the the cloud versions of the applications. It still has co-pilot functionality inside of it. Yeah, and, and just, to, just to add to something Shire was saying, right, about the segmentation, um, even in the enterprise version, the data that you'll see or that Copilot will use to assist you when you're, when you're generating content or asking questions, it respects all of the permission models, all of the things like labeling, all of the information barriers. So if, if, if Norm, for example, was to make a query in a tenant that we shared and I had information barrier protected some data from, from, from a group that he was in, that data would not be used to form the, res the result of the response that he would, he would ask the question for. So it's very, very, um, very, very well um, segmented in that, sp in that space. Uh, the key here too around this, and this is where governance comes in, is it respects permissions. It doesn't respect views. So if, if there have been people that have been using, um, they can't see it, so they don't have access as permissions, no. um, they may be in a world of hurt when they go to use Copilot because it will present mm -hmm. information to them that maybe they didn't know is there. So this is a good opportunity uh, for people to go out and look at their permissions and make sure that their permissions are set up properly. So putting my Microsoft hat on, nope. <laughs> SharePoint Premium over sharing, right? <laughs> Oversharing the, the new things that we're releasing with SharePoint Premium. Um, I'm not a salesman, but just go look at that. The oversharing links and the oversharing features we have in the uh, in the advanced management dashboards will help you in this space. Taking my salesman half right now. Yeah, <laughs> these are good things to be talking about for an organization that is investing all of their information assets into a platform like SharePoint Office 365. It is important to to know that you might have overshared content, that you might have things that are not governed the way that you expected. Let, let's not forget a lot of us, a lot of organizations rush to the cloud when the pandemic hit. Some shortcuts in a traditional governance sense 
had to have been taken. So now's a great time to clean up. It's never too late. It's not about fear mongering. There's probably more opportunity with Copilot than people realize for personal productivity. So I think it's a good thing that people are willing to consider their exposure. I, I remember when Delve was first, I first experienced Delve and I could see things that I had no idea I had access to, but it was a great opportunity to start rem remediation. And I think Copilot mm -hmm. is going to do that for a lot of organizations. Well, yeah, the, the oversharing reports and the advanced sharing reports in the, um, it was previously Syntex, now SharePoint Advanced Management, definitely worth a look. Um, they'll, they'll definitely um, help any organization understand where their sharing is getting out of control. So. I use those tools as part of a, like a quarterly maintenance assessment for clients so that they mm -hmm. have an understanding that things are being shared that shouldn't be and you know who they're shared with. So I love those. Yeah. And we're adding, a, we're, we're adding a whole bunch of new features to that over the next kind of quarter. So watch out for those. The one thing I do know is don't wait until you've done all your data remediation and clean up and all those things because people are constantly putting information in. You're never going to be able to sweep everything under the rug. Mm. <laughs> it might get exposed. You just got to do constant work. Get started. Do it right now and see what's broken and mm -hmm. fix it. Uh, because if you're going to wait, you'll never get there. Garbage in, garbage out, right? <laughs> Invest in governance. Just yeah. invest in governance now. And training around it. And what does that look like with well, security training and sharing and, you know, get your end yeah. users yeah. on the journey. Teach them how to use it so you can get a return on your investment. Because, you know, I've seen it where if they're just doing even some of the basics, they were getting a little stuck. Um, so you just, yeah, you, you're just going to need to invest a little bit of time on top of it. And then you're going to get a lot out of it in terms of you know, productivity from the end user, let alone all of the technical side of it and uh, the benefits it's going to bring. Look at the ROI we're all, we're identifying for these past questions. Yeah. <laughs>